Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and I am recording this in lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, on Sunday, December 17th of the year 2023. And I just want to say that tomorrow, the 18th of December, I am doing my Vision of the Future 2024 presentation, and I would love it if you joined me. So it's at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. This is the last call for that because this is it. Tomorrow's the event, and it's $55, and you can join me through my website, thegoldenastrologer.com. Click book online. You will see Vision of the Future 2024 listed among the choices. And I am presenting this for the next year. And we want to look at what energetic projections you want to put into next year and where you want to level up and where do you um, want to go with your energies next year. So we're going to talk about a lot of stuff that's going on. We've got some big, big transits happening and it's going to be, I think, an exciting year. So join me. I would love to see you there. Um, it has been a quite a year, 2023, and we're winding down. We are now more than halfway through the month of December. And, you know, the next time we meet again, it will be the weekend of the holidays. So here we are. This is the last weekend without a holiday as the next two will, will have holidays involved. So um, it's interesting. Mercury's retrograde, as you know, and already it's been a whirlwind. Already it has been complicated. Already I've had difficulties. <laughs> and I kind of expected it. It was such a shift of energy. I felt good on Tuesday. And Wednesday morning I woke up and I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted. And it was already Mercury retrograde. And I woke up like that. So it's been complicated. These last couple of days have been really, really a whirlwind. And just trying to deal with them has been rough, a little bit rough. But Mercury is trining Jupiter tomorrow. And that's good. This is the second passage of this aspect. Now, both of them are retrograde. The last time we did this was December 7th, which Mercury was direct at that time, and then passed Jupiter in a trine. So that was the first week, that first week of December, where we had this experience and Mercury then went retrograde the other day. And now Mercury and Jupiter are meeting in a trine here on Monday at 9.26 a.m. Or is that 28? 9.28 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. So this is the second passage. The third passage, when both Mercury and Jupiter will be direct, will be it later on in January. So there are two planets changing signs this week, and Mercury is one of them. So Mercury went retrograde at 8 degrees Capricorn, and that's not very far into Capricorn. So it's moving backwards, 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 and by Friday night, it's going to enter Sagittarius. Early Saturday morning, depending on where you are, and it's it's shortly after midnight for me. It'll be 1.18 a.m. Saturday the 23rd in Eastern Time, 10.18 p.m. Pacific Time on Friday night the 22nd. And so this is very much a very uh, interesting passage because Mercury goes back into Sag. And it's going to spend the rest of the retrograde in Sag. It's going to go direct on New Year's Day in Sag. And so it is not a long retrograde, you know. It's interesting because normally it's, you know, we expect 21 days and a lot of times it's 23 days. And this time it's only 19 days, which I think is positive for us. <laughs> so, yes, here is Mercury. Here is Mercury doing its thing, going backwards and being really, um, really very much in Sagittarius. Now, we know that Jupiter rules Sagittarius. And Jupiter and Mercury are going to go direct at the same time because Jupiter will go like New Year's Eve or the night before, between depending on where you are. And it's going to be this whole push forward right at the new year. So I'm going to be talking about some of that tomorrow night in my, in my master class. And one of the things that we want to be aware of is how to um, navigate all of this because we're we're dealing with mercury as it's you know it's it's always a complicated thing when it's retrograde you have to go back and look at things but you know it's it's interesting that it's talking to jupiter three times and it's 
back in Jupiter's sign at the end of the week, and it's that's where it's going to spend the next couple of weeks is in Jupiter's sign, and then it's going to really be like dealing with Jupiter a lot. So there's a lot of this Mercury Jupiter energy, which I think is different and interesting because Mercury is really, you know, it's it rules Gemini. And it's, that's the opposite sign from Sagittarius, which Jupiter rules. So they're really like an opposition kind of rulership thing. And it's going back into Sag, where it's not really its favorite sign. I think it's okay in Sag. It is a wordy, um, very strongly air-oriented planet. It's analytical. You know, it is. it does rule Virgo too, which is an Earth sign. But... It is very wordy and analytical and effete and trickstery. Sagittarius is like, no nonsense. Let's just get moving. It's fire. You know, it's ruled by Jupiter. Hey, it's big. It's great. It's grand. You know, um, Mercury there, you know, is so used to details, the specifics in Gemini and the specifics in Virgo, that when it gets into something as grand and big and um, open as Sagittarius, it's not those specifics that we're, we're concerned with, that we are concerned with. It's not those specific details. It's a bigger vision. And now Sagittarius and Jupiter are asking us to do that vision thing for the new year. Now everybody does this every year. It's like, oh yeah, what are your what are your resolutions? Well, I don't think resolutions are things that work for people, but I do think, you know, you know, people set intentions, but also I do think it's important to open open yourself up, and that's what Sag does. It helps us open up. Sagittarius is a big open sign. They want big adventures, and so maybe. What we're supposed to look at is an expansion, there's that word again, of what we're projecting into the new year. Um, so, you know, it's it's not simple and straightforward. Mercury likes things in detail and Sag just doesn't do that. So it's complicated for Mercury to be in Sagittarius um, in Jupiter's domain. And then Jupiter which is in Taurus, which is very earthbound and not as big and bouncy as, as Sag and, and Jupiter are, it's, it's, this, this is an interesting dynamic. This is a very interesting dynamic that they are in these places that are not um, comfortable or familiar for them. So I think it's important to pay attention to what's happening and what we're reviewing about this year. And I was talking with one of my friends today. We had a little gathering outside in the garden because her husband's Greek family came. And um, it was really lovely. And people here are so lovely. And we were saying that this isn't this has not been a fun year. Um, the, I think it started off okay. And then the second half was really just where things got tougher. And we learned a lot. We have learned a lot. And we always do when we have to make do with what the energies are presenting us. We have to learn things and stretch ourselves. And, you know... That's the other thing. Jupiter's about stretching yourself. So where have we stretched ourselves this year? Where have we gained new knowledge? That's what Jupiter asks as we, as we wind down Sagittarius because that's the other thing that's happening this week. Mercury's going to go into Sagittarius. Um, this is another, <laughs> it's another complicated dynamic. The sun is leaving Sagittarius this week. So we are in the last days of Sagittarius as far as the season of Sagittarius with the sun. The sun is moving into Capricorn, and that means it's the in the northern hemisphere winter solstice. In the southern hemisphere, it's the summer solstice. And the solstice um, begins um, when the sun enters Capricorn, wherever you are. And that would be 1027 p.m. Eastern Time, 727 p.m. Pacific Time on Thursday the 21st. And the experience of, you know, the sun going into Capricorn is when we experience the longest um, period of darkness in the year. Now, Costa Rica doesn't work that way. <laughs> we, the sun is already setting later, okay? And it's only a few minutes, but I was noticing that over the last couple weeks, the, the sun 
was setting early and now it's starting to set later and later and later. So that doesn't work for us here. It's, you know, close to the equator, it's a different scenario. And close to the equator, we really get 12 hours of each light and dark and it gives or takes a few minutes at this time of year. But what we're seeing now is that the sun is moving out of Sag and will no longer be ruled by Sagittarius, his ruler Jupiter. It will be ruled by Saturn, which is Capricorn's ruler. And so this is all like the dynamics, the shifting dynamics of the week ahead. So Mercury talks to Jupiter. It's getting a nod from Jupiter before it enters Jupiter's sign at the end of the week. The sun is leaving Jupiter's sign and then goes into Saturn's sign on Thursday. And then it's going to meet with Mercury, interestingly enough, Friday afternoon in Capricorn. So Mercury, before it leaves Capricorn, you know, it'll come back later in January. But before it leaves Capricorn, it's going to conjunct with the sun. And this is what happens when Mercury goes retrograde. So there's this, like... There's this conjunction, this interior conjunction that happens because Mercury is retrograde and it's going to, it, it, the reason it retrogrades is because it can't really go too far from the sun and you can't have Mercury like speeding ahead of the sun and Mercury is a speedy planet and you can't have Mercury too far ahead. Mercury is usually in the same sign as the sun, the sign before the sign after because it was starting to get ahead of the sun in Capricorn while the sun was in Sag, it stopped and turned around. Now they're going to conjunct, which they always do during the retrograde. That will happen on Friday. Mercury and the sun at the very beginning of Capricorn at 1.54 p.m. Eastern time before Mercury almost 12 hours later goes back into Sag. So that's very interesting. It's going to make that sign shift. It's not like it's staying in Capricorn. It's going to pass the sun, come back. No. But Mercury and the sun are always interesting because they do conjunct a few times a year because Mercury goes retrograde a few times a year. And Mercury will have new information from the sun. It'll have new information from Jupiter too tomorrow. But on Friday, it will get a zap from the sun and what we do we call that combust when mercury is in the sun's rays and in the intensity of the heat of the sun imagine imagine being in the heat of the sun it's combust and so we do this we do this experience of mercury and the sun being in this this feeling of heat and combustion and then mercury comes back and says okay i learned something from the sun Here's, here's what I learned about being in the heat and the light and the illumination, in the illumination of the sun. So what is it that we have to learn from that? So there's going to be new information. We're going to learn new things. We're going to experience um, a zap of energy from the sun to Mercury. And so these are things that we have to pay attention to. So when Mercury and the sun meet up on Friday, we do connect with that experience of you know mercury receiving from the sun and so mercury then move on go into sag and you know and then spend the rest of its retrograde there and go direct there now this is this is something that it, mercury is a busy guy this week mercury is often a busy guy we see him doing a lot of things but he's a busy guy this week he's changing signs the sun is changing signs so this is a week of shifting energies we're shifting out of the season of sagittarius which is the jolly party jupiterian season to the season of capricorn which is um you know all about the somberness of saturn and so that's never simple. It's always an interesting thing that Christmas is supposed to be the jolly time of the year. And it really ends before Christmas happens. Saturn takes over the sun. And the two of them have to work together on a certain, on a certain level. Um, as I speak, the moon is with Saturn in Pisces. But, but this is... This is an interesting dynamic that we go through every year, and it's this sobering, sobering feeling of, oh my God, how much did I eat? How much did I spend? What did I do? I went overboard. And But if you didn't, if you just like enjoyed the energies of Jupiter and felt free and open 
and congenial and like got together with people, then you can feel like you are moving out of Jupiterian energy without having overindulged. Jupiter's been retrograde these weeks. As long as it's been, the sun's been in Sagittarius, Jupiter's been retrograde. And so we're not, you know, it's more of an internal experience of Jupiter. That doesn't always happen. Last year, remember what happened? Jupiter was going direct just as the sun was entering Jupiter's sign of Sagittarius. So that was, that was pretty powerful. And so that was a big push. That was a big energetic push and openness right at, you know, Thanksgiving time. And so it's, it's not that this year. We're going to get into that Saturn region, that Saturn season, and then Jupiter will go direct. And there'll be some relief then when Jupiter goes direct. Even though Capricorn and um, Taurus, where Jupiter is residing right now, do get along very well because they are both Earth signs. And so the Sun in Capricorn will make that trine to Jupiter, as Mercury has, on the 27th of December, which is not this week, but the following week. And so that's a very good and interesting experience. You know, the Sun trine Jupiter, it's a beautiful thing. So after the experience of, you know, this shifting around with um, the Sun into the new sign, it will still contact Jupiter the ruler of Sag, where it is now. And so what does that mean for us as we go forward in these next days? We have, um, you know, a different rulership in the sky. I mean, Neptune has been in Pisces, so it's been ruling the heavens for years. But on a day-to-day basis, you know, that's been years and years and years. And, um, you know, after the 21st, when the sun moves into, uh, you know, Capricorn and it, it oddly conjuncts Mercury the next day <laughs> as Mercury's leaving, um, they're ruled by Saturn. And that'll be three planets in those days, those few days, ruled by Saturn. That's Pluto, that's the sun, and that's Mercury. And the three of them are, so Saturn's in Pisces, ruled by Neptune, and Neptune's in its own domain. So this is... This is something that we're going to experience. It's really a Neptunian time. It's Saturn and Neptune. That's really what's going on here. And they're both in Pisces. So, you know, our experience of things being ruled by Saturn is not, it's not comfortable. It's not fun. It's not um, gracious. And it's, it can be elegant for sure. But it's not, it, Saturn is always a little cranky, right? <laughs> So let's just embrace Saturn for what it is and use it to sort of regulate ourselves and walk in duality. We have to walk in duality with the Sag and the Capricorn energy. So right now Mercury's in Capricorn, Sun is in Sag. They're going to do this little shit. They're going to pass like two ships in the night on Friday and then Mercury's going to go into Sag and the Sun will be in Capricorn still. And then, and that's it. So we're, we're still dealing with a lot of still Sagittarius energy and Mars isn't Sagittarius for a little while yet. And so they're ruled by Jupiter. So we've got to, we're walking through all of this but to a duality between expansion and contraction. And the expansion is always this Jupiterian experience. I want to expand. And then Saturn says, who are you to expand? Can, do you have the resources to expand? Do you have the focus to expand? Can you do this? And so we're walking, we always, and you know what? Every day we're walking in duality, always. But this is a particularly potent duality that we're getting at the end of this week. We're getting the duality of Saturn being so structured and organized and grounded and frugal and the Sagittarian Jupiterian energy of expansion and exploration and not being frugal, being a little indulgent. And so we're walking between this fine line. Can we do this? Yes, of course we can. We just need to bear in mind that this is what's going on, walking in that duality. And walking in duality is something important that we have to do on a regular basis. Um, To be able to hold the energy of the duality is very, very powerful. And if you can do that, you can do a lot in your life. Walking in the duality of, I know I feel good in my soul and my body and my rhythm and my intuition feels good, but I've got a zillion things on my plate that I'm worried about. 
and I'm concerned about, and I don't know what how they're going to get resolved. You have to stay in the trust and stay practical and, and move through those things that you need to work on, right? Right now, during this Mercury retrograde, we all have details that we have to, you know, clean up. And I'm, I'm no exception. I've had a whole bunch of things come forward that I have to work on and clean up. Um, but we can't worry. We can't, like, sit and worry and ignore the expansive part of this because all of that... Capricorn can really, that Saturn can overdo itself. And we've got Saturn energy happening now. We're going to, and it's going to shift around with, you know, Sagittarius and Jupiter at the end of the week. We're going to do that exchange. And the experience of the duality of Saturn and, and Jupiter are, are an artfully handled duo. Okay. So when you have, um, you know, when you have this experience of holidays like this, we're always sort of walking with this duality of, yes, I'm going to have a good time. We want to have a good time, but also keep our head on straight. And that's what we've got to focus on through the new year. We have to do that. And, and then eventually, eventually, our friend Mercury will go back into Capricorn next year. And it will be a a different experience because we'll have been through all of this retrograde. It's like anything else. It's where you learn the lessons and where you gain the knowledge and gain the lessons um, of, of Mercury retrograde. And it's like, where have I learned things? Okay. And then I can walk back with that Mercury and Capricorn and like handle the details as I need to. Um, that's a big part of this week is walking in the duality. And maintaining the straight line and the efforts and and not resting on our laurels, but at the same time not burning ourselves out and and being very um, focused on on trust and faith as well so it's it's complicated you have to be practical and trusting at the same time we don't like to do that we want to be one way or the other it's not possible you have to do both and especially this week so this is this is a big theme for this week is getting through this um energy that asks us to trust with sagittarius and jupiter and have faith at the same time we have saturn feeling like things could be closing in on us so that's that's what's next this week the other thing that is going to happen that's an interesting big deal that happens once a year is that venus is going to oppose uranus so this time and for the last several years when this aspect happens venus has to be in scorpio because uranus is in taurus and uranus being in taurus is one of those things it's very weird for taurus because uranus likes to be in scorpio it's obviously an aquarius planet but it it's exalted in scorpio and the thing, and I've said this, I remember saying this last year, Venus likes to be in Taurus and doesn't want to be in Scorpio. So the experience of this is that they're in each other's uh, domains. And while Uranus doesn't rule Scorpio, it is exalted there. And so it's, it's an interesting dynamic that they are in each other's places and they are opposing one another. And it's important to watch this energy. Now, this is going to happen between Wednesday night and Thursday, depending on where you live. So if you're in the Pacific time zone, it's going to happen Wednesday night at 11.04 p.m. late. And if you're in the Eastern time zone, it's 2.04 a.m. on Thursday. But if you're in Europe, it'll happen later in the day on Thursday. And if you're in Australia, it'll be Thursday later in the day, much later in the day. And, you know... Uranus and Venus are an interesting duo. They are an opposition of energies. Venus is wants to be calm, gentle, beautiful, appreciating beauty, um, very sexy. Um, she's a little more come hither in Scorpio, of course. And Uranus is all about electricity and wild energies and brilliant ideas and big bright experiences and taking risks and so venus and uranus in an opposition because it is an opposition and that's 
a hard aspect in astrology. They are something that requires, uh, again, walking in duality. <laughs> That's what oppositions do. And so we have to embrace both Venus and Uranus, Venus being a little more come hither and a little sexier than she is and a little snappier in Scorpio than she is when she's in Taurus, when she wants to garden and bake and and love everyone and be in Mother Nature and under the sun. Um, and she's, she's a little more on the prowl in Scorpio. She's a little zestier. So what happens when Uranus opposes all of that from Taurus? She remembers a bit of who she really is with that Taurus energy, but she's also connecting with a little bit of a spicy side and a brilliant genius creative side. So that creativity is profound and very present in Taurus in with that Uranus aspect. And she's she's experiencing that brilliant creativity and electric idea and that innovation. So if you want to get deep into your creativity, if you want to get deep into your um, experiences of creativity this week, then I recommend you do that. You spend some time with that as you are um, playing around with Venus and Uranus's energy. And so I recommend that you push yourself a little bit creatively. If you're in the mood for that, you want to push yourself creatively so that you can get yourself in the space of, um, you know, thinking outside the box. That's what Uranus does. And Venus loves to do that when she's challenged that way, which she's being this week. This is a challenge. It's also a time when in relationships we might want to express more freedom, more liberation, more um, self-empowerment through freedom. We may feel like we are in a place that we want to gather our, our, our bigger, brighter experiences of what the world is like without being encumbered in some way. So that may be, you know what? Let's take a vacation without the family. Let's not go with everybody else. Let's, you know, whatever that means. It may mean I want to go do something on my own this week. And it's hanging in the air, like just as the holidays are at the solstice and just as the holidays are about to begin and stuff. And it may, <laughs> it may also mean that when you're doing your Christmas shopping, you are um, looking for some eclectic, different, innovative little gifts for people. You might be like, oh, I'm tired of buying them that. I'm going to bring a little pizzazz into our Christmas this year and I'm going to put it out there and like, let's get some new things happening for our Christmas. So that's an exciting, exciting, exciting energy. Okay. Now, of course, once again, I say to you, don't get like, this is Uranus, okay? It can be something out of nowhere and something comes out of nowhere and something happens out of nowhere and we are not, we are not um, like prepared for it, okay? We're not prepared for it. I tell you that allow the surprises to occur Allow you yourself to be surprised. Allow yourself to go straight into something different. If someone says, hey, we're going to do this on Christmas. Want to come? Yeah, I do. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to say, this is not about sticking with tradition. This is not about sticking with tradition. This is about doing something completely different and a little outside of the realm that you normally are in. So when, if you feel the need to do that, by all means, pay attention to that because it's, it's the vibe of the time, okay? So pay attention to that vibe. It's good. It's a good vibe. At the same day, Mars is going to make that in conjunct to Uranus, which is... <laughs> another ounce of pizzazz and it's a little bit of an uncomfortable aspect but you have to manage your um you know your energies that day that's that's also an energy of like you don't want to get into an accident you don't want to drive crazy mars and uranus you Re remember what it's like with those guys but and this is that needling aspect it's the inconjunct and it's a needling aspect it's a it's an experience of how we are like might not be comfortable with some of our energies, particularly if we get hot under the collar. So try not to get hot under the collar. Use this energy to, as I always say, have a breakthrough, aim for a breakthrough, 
aim for something exciting, um, look to do something different, be, be innovative, do like take a different route, take a different path, do a little different dance, something that's a little out of the ordinary outside of the box. And in the meantime, Mercury and Saturn are going to have a nice conversation on Thursday the 21st. So that's a very structured Mercury and Capricorn sextile Saturn. There's like helping you walk in duality in the, in the focus realm, in the structured realm. And then what's going to happen is, um, remember, the sun will enter Capricorn and it's going to make that same aspect to Saturn on Christmas Eve. So sun and Saturn will sextile again. So there's, there's a lot of balance here. Even if the wild side of Uranus and then the wild side of Jupiter come, are coming out, and those two are keywords for next year, tune in. And the, those wild energies are coming out, you know, the sun and Mercury connecting and uh, connecting with Saturn are going to give us that, um, that stability and structure we, we may still need, despite all the all the wild stuff. So my event tomorrow evening is at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It is called Vision of the Future 2024. It's on the 18th of December. I welcome one and all. It'd be lots of fun. We're going to talk about next year and what to expect and how to navigate and all sorts of other energetic projections set ourselves up for positive experiences and powerful experiences for next year. I am available for sessions in astrology, in Reiki, and you can also uh, join me in expansion mentoring. All of the above are um, working with me on a regular basis. Either you can work with one session, astrology, Reiki, or you can work with me three months, six months, 12 months in expansion mentoring. They're available on my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, book online. I'm also on Instagram, The Golden Astrologer, and I hope you have an amazing, beautiful week ahead as we approach the holidays. I will probably do the podcast early next week, and I'll put an, a notice out. Well, it, it when I record it and put it out, it, it notifies you if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, be a subscriber, Apple, Spotify, all those places, and uh, I will announce it on Instagram as well. So thank you for listening. I have a... Um, Many, many wishes for all of you as we approach the holiday season and many good things. Join me in my masterclass tomorrow and I will see you but right around holiday time. Thank you for listening. Gratitude to all.